the worst regular season collapse of the golden age. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, here we are. It's the Chris and Chris show. Chris and little Chris. We are fresh off our 27 hour excursion to uh, Tempe, Arizona, where besides a hockey game, we got to take in some Portillo's, some Culver's, some Waffle House. Chris got to win a go kart race. All that was great. And then there was the hockey game first of all before we start uh thank you very much for checking out the chris and chris edition of locked on golden knights every saturday is reserved for me and my son christopher monday through friday myself and the almighty tony cordasco you can catch us anywhere you get your podcast and on youtube so here we go let's dive right into this golden knights game so first period golden knights wasn't a good period they logged three shots on goal not great. Neither team really was exceptional. The Coyotes certainly found their game. The Golden Knights didn't necessarily find their game. What did you think, Chris, about the first period of the game? Well, one, I've been noticing a lot of the first periods have been scoreless, especially Vegas. I feel like they're having a hard time scoring in the first period. Um. Um, it was an okay period. I thought we could have done better, especially against, especially against the Coy- that Coyotes team. Um, um, we should we should have had a better first period. I didn't like the way they played. Uh, I didn't like the way they played. Um, and it was just a bad period. Only logged three. I think it was four shots in goal. Maybe they added one after the fact. I don't know. Um, All right, so let's recap the goal scoring and everything and all the stuff I guess we should do, and then we'll kind of talk about our reactions to what we saw. All right, first period is scoreless. Fine. Alex Kerfoot scores for the Coyotes to get everything started, and it was a bad goal. I don't know what Logan saw or didn't see on that one. Bad goal. It's going to happen. Logan's been playing really well. Nothing the Golden Knights couldn't come back from, and – in standard Golden Knights fashion, the response. Golden Knights responded a minute and 22 seconds later. Jack Eichel cleans up a rebound. At that point, things didn't feel too bad. Right, Chris? You know, Golden Knights get that response. It felt like things were going to get better. And then who scored the next goal for the Golden Knights, Chris? Who was it? Who was it? Who was it? It wasn't Matt uh, Carlson. Little look on his face. William Carlson, nice pass from Briso from Brandon Brisson, as uh, Coach Cassidy would call him. At that point, okay, everything's feeling pretty good. Anthony Mantha scores the game's next goal. Chandler Stevenson scores the next goal. It's four to one Golden Knights going into the third period. The party barn, the party barn mullet arena, whatever they call that place down there. Golden Knight fans having a good time. That second intermission, everyone's talking about the game and how things are looking. And then the Golden Knights, okay, let's just kind of get through the, the third period unscathed, and uh, everything will be good, right? Right? One. Yeah. Yeah, the we Coyotes. never left four months. No, we'd never left four months. No, we never. The Coyotes put up a friggin' six-pack in the third period. Goals by Doan, Bukestad, uh, Carcone. It wasn't Car. It's not Carcone. It's Carcone, I believe. Coyotes fans, I'm sure a few of you are watching today. Feel free to drag me if I said that wrong. I think they they pronounce it Carcone. He got the next two goals. Josh Brown gets one, and Logan Cooley, great rookie. Logan Logan Cooley ends up with the empty netter to ice this one, and Golden Knight fans end up leaving the mullet absolutely shell shocked. Chris, your reactions on the third period. Well, first, bring me back to the second. I was texting Ryan, and I once said, and I once said, okay, we're waiting for one, don't have to worry. And then she said, don't jinx it. 
the third period is our weakness. And then, and then, of course, I, I, and of course, I made that face, face that that said false. And then, and she just said, "Be careful." And I said, "It can happen." And then, right after that, boom, 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 four goals scored by her, by her zone. Listen, I got to give Ryan credit, right? She said she her her quote was the third period has been the Golden Knights weakness, I believe. So yeah. that's certainly a credit Ryan for having a having having um, a bad foresight into what was I say bad because of the result. I mean, it was the right perspective, but Lord. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, credits. So we me and Chris were at the game last night. Let's be clear about this. We were in and out of, of Arizona very, very quickly, but long enough to take in that um, bad word of a hockey game. We'll leave it at that, I guess. Um, credit Sinbin. So quick, quick, we'll, we'll talk about reactions to Mullet Arena, but the reason I'm pulling up Sinbin's quote or, or tweet right now is they don't show the goal replays very quickly or very well. They show it while the play is happening. Just the in-game presentation was was not very good as far as just being able to take the game in while watching the game. If that makes sense, we'll talk about that in the second segment. So Ken did a really good job from Sinman breaking down each individual goal. You have a rush situation where Hannafin is beat. That leads to a goal. Howden loses a stick battle. I, we don't need to go over all this. It was bad. Um, what got me in the third period, though, and this is something I talked to you about, Chris. Gold Knights got a four to one lead. Get the stinking period over with. Get pucks deep. Go to go in the corner and battle, and just go to work. Right? Just go to work. No, you got Jack Eichel trying to dangle a puck between his legs. Ivan Barbashev does the same friggin' thing a second later, a couple seconds later. Leads to a turnover, which creates a scoring opportunity for the Arizona Coyotes. Like, I don't understand why the Golden Knights just couldn't be content, so to speak. You know, why are the star players trying to do all of these silly things instead of just, you know, Chandler Stevenson grabbing? I can't say that. It's a Saturday podcast. But point being is just simplify the game. And, Chris, I always talk to, you know, in your house league games, do the little things right. Correct. Stop rolling your eyes at me. Yeah. Do the little things right. Do you think the Golden Knights did the little things right in the third period yesterday? Well, one, when you said there are the good players and they're trying to do all the all these fancy moves, that's because they're the good players. They they want to impress their Las Vegas and all the Las Vegas fans, which is probably probably more. There's probably more Vegas. Fans. You know what's impressive, Chris? Winning a hockey game. Keep going. Um, and there's, if I count, like, right, there's more Golden Knight fans than than Yotes fans. There could have been. There could have been. Well, I I kind I kind of see why, but like like you said, all they need to do is win is win a hockey and win a hockey game and and get and get and get Arizona out of, out of, out of this crappy arena. Be nice. Be nice. Be nice. Um, so, uh, listen, I mean, credit the Arizona Coyotes. Like, let's be clear about this. The Coyotes deserve full credit for earning that victory. The Coyotes played very, very well. They stuck in the game. They took advantage of an opportunistic Vegas Golden Knights team that, just for whatever reason, we were just, I was talking to Ken about a half hour ago. He'll be watching this in a little bit. It just seemed like the Golden Knights stopped playing. Whatever the reason was they stopped playing, it's – they just turned it off. They absolutely turned it off, and it just seemed like uh, since they had a three-goal lead against a, a team that's on the out, out of the playoff picture, like the game should be over. They shouldn't even play the game. That, that's not how it works in the NHL. I don't care if it's the Sabres, the Sharks, the Coyotes, the Oilers, the Avalanche. It's a 60-minute game, and three-goal leads aren't safe, which unfortunately we're learning, learning a lot about that in, in Vegas lately. Nashville Preds a week and a half ago, and then – now this, you know, three goal leads on the road. Sure, there nothing is safe, but it's pretty close to safe. The just no killer instinct. Didn't do the little things right. And again, Coyotes deserve full credit for taking advantage of the situation. Um, some of the goals were weird. Like weird bounces are going to happen. Uh, Zach Whitecloud tips one in. A puck winds up hitting the the crossbar. Goes in off off of Logan's either back of his head or the back or his shoulder. Whatever it was, like. Little goals like that, they're going to happen. And when you got a three-goal lead, you have some house money to play with. And unfortunately, it doesn't end up 
working out like that. So, I mean, you know, not interesting stat. I think Jesse from The Athletic and Ken from Sinman both were putting this one up there. The Golden Knights didn't, or excuse me, the Arizona Coyotes did not register any high danger chances and found a way to score six goals. We talked about what a high danger chance is, Chris. It could be a, a you know, a, a rush situation. You know, it could be a rebound, whatever it is. They had no high danger scoring chances in the third and they put up six goals. What does that make you like? Like, how do you, what do you say about that, Chris? What do you say about that as a fan watching the game? Like, how do you feel? Well, one, I think, I think, especially Eichel, it's like all those crazy moves that they tried to do. And um, um, those are the things that would, would that, that, that would cause them. If he, if he, if he, if if they did do do those moves, if he did not did not do those moves, we could have probably walked out winning seven to four. I don't um, know. Listen, dude, I'm gonna cut you off for a second. It you can't have a collapse like that with just one player not making a mistake. Like it takes it takes a whole village to do what the Golden Knights did last night and. They, they did something very inappropriate in the bed last night. Like that's how bad that was. Okay, so keep on going. Now you, you're sorry to cut you off, but your your quote was if Eichel wasn't trying all those dangles, maybe the Golden Knights win the game. So keep going with your thought now, buddy. Um. Also, Thompson should should have saved them. It's like those those should be easy to save. A couple like, of I, them, definitely sure. Um, I think I think we we should definitely came out that game as a victory, and of course bring back um to bring it back to that first goal. Um, and after I watched it, that that was I know that that was one of the weak goals. And give credit to Mantha, that that third goal we got was beautiful. If we can if we can just keep holding on. Give credit that, to Carlson, he set it up. Credit to Carlson, Carlson, Carl. Say Carlson. Just if you say Carlson three times, Tony does a backflip and turns blue. Carlson, Carlson, Carlson. Shut, Shut up, up, Tony. Tony. If it's your first time watching the podcast, get that in your head. You're going to hear that a lot. So that's all I got to say about that. We got a hat trick of shut up Tony's in there. All right. So let's put a bow on this game, Chris. Let's just have one final thought about, about the game. If you can some put one, and I know it's tough because there's a lot of things. I'm still laughing over there. What was the worst thing that went wrong in that game that would have possibly led the Golden, led the Golden Knights to a victory? What's the biggest mistake the Golden Knights made last night? Go. Um, probably Eichel, Eichel and them with those with those moves with those moves, and around the and you telling around the people to create job Tony videos. <laughs> I hear what you're saying, dude. I get it. Um, I, I'll see your comment about Eichel trying to be a little too cute and just simply the little things, the little things, the little things, the little things. It's a 60 minute game for a reason. Whether it's the Coyotes in April or the Coyotes in January, the Golden Knights are not going to win a hockey game with an effort like that. All right, sit up. Sit up straight, buddy. Come on, sit up straight. Let's go. All right, so moving forward, little buddy. Moving forward. We took a trip to the Mullet Arena last night, the smallest professional National Hockey League venue for the foreseeable future, at least probably two or three more seasons, if I had to guess. I don't know. I don't know what the situation is down there. So my first reaction, and again, I want to be clear. I know there's some Coyote fans that are going to watch this podcast today. I got nothing against the Coyotes as a team. I still say the Coyotes have the best roster of under 25-year-olds in the NHL. The on-ice product has a great future. I'll go even farther and say when teams like the Avalanche or the Stars are ready to pass the torch, the Coyotes are one of the teams that are going to carry the torch of the Central Division as these players grow into their own skin and just get more comfortable being NHL players. So full marks for the Coyotes as a team and the direction the on-ice product is heading. Now, my first reaction to Mullet Arena 
Metallica, one of my favorite bands in the world. I've can I probably see them 25, 30, 35 times. They've been basically as far as my adult life is concerned, an arena band, a stadium band, you know, really, really big, big venues. I had seen them at the Allstate Arena, which is where the Chicago Wolves play. Uh, it's about an 18,000-seat venue, if I had to guess. And then I was fortunate enough to land tickets to see them like a year later. We're going back in like the early 2000s right now at a place called the Aragon Ballroom or the Aragon Brawl Room, as some people would call it in Chicago. It was so cool seeing one of my favorite bands in the world in a small club. That's the vibe that I get right now going to watch games at the Mullet Arena. That's the positive. It's cool. Like, it's cool going and seeing a professional hockey game in a small venue. Chris, would you agree with that so far? Yeah. What What, what are your thoughts on Mullet? Like, what do you... What did you think about? I mean, I think you, I think you seemed you were you were happy with everything. I think I think you enjoyed the not not the food, not 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 the go karts, not 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 all the good food we had, but the actual game itself in the arena. What's your thoughts on it, Chris? You go first. Um, well, one when you walk in, I like how you come about. Oh, that's a different experience. I don't that that you don't see every day in T-Mobile. Um, Definitely. Uh, um, I thought the bleachers that were there are different. I I like them up of how of how they did it. So you um, like you like you like the bleachers and stuff. We we just for those to get a visual. Uh, me and Chris we sat kind of just off like the corner, kind of near one of the bleacher sections. We had a really close view of that area. So keep going, buddy. Um, um, I thought the. Uh, um, I thought the way, I thought the way the, um, um, I thought the way they did the lights was pretty cool. Oh, when cool. we, when we walked in, I like how I was like, oh, like maroon. Yeah, that was really like cool. what? Um, how when we, when, when we first walked in the area of the ice, how, how, how they did the lighting there. That, that was awesome. Yeah, I mean, it was. Listen, they're they're trying to put a good experience together given the circumstances, and no one's gonna, you know, talk bad about the effort or anything like that. Um, you know, I found it strange that I was sitting in a plastic seat, sitting near a, you know, a thousand bleacher seats watching a hockey game. It's it's strange, right? It's different. Um, a lot of the Coyote fans that you know stopped by my my Twitter handle reminded me that that's more for the ASU games where it's like a section where the, 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 the kids watching the game, the college kids, they never sit down. They stand up, they cheer the whole time, which is pretty cool. NHL fans didn't do that, but I think it's pretty cool from a college perspective. Um, as far as an NHL team playing in an arena like that, it's, it's bad. It's, it's just, it's just bad. And I'll save most of my reactions for Monday's show with Tony. I'm sure we'll, we'll dive into a little more edgy perspective about it, but, I wasn't impressed with seeing a National Hockey League game in a place like that. I'm, I'll go as far as I feel like it's an embarrassment to the league. I think it's an embarrassment to the Coyotes as an organization. I know a lot of people are stopping by my Twitter handle saying that at least the owner is trying to keep the team in Arizona. And sure, that's cool. And if it works out, great. Um, I had a real positive interaction with uh, – Chris, let me just give him full credit. We were going up and back about it. He helped me understand. Uh, Chris at CJK Shell, C-H-E-L. Um, at, at first, Chris came in to kind of chirp me and kind of be the defender of the situation. Then we had a good up and back about everything. And I definitely appreciate all the Coyote fans that stopped by to help me understand the situation a little bit better because admittedly, I don't understand it completely. I'm just giving you the perspective of a visiting team fan, podcaster, definitely not a journalist, but you know, from those two perspectives, and I didn't like it. I it was fine, it was cool, whatever. But to go there to see an entire like season's worth of hockey games there, or to even cover a team for a full season in an environment like that, I did nothing for me as a fan. Uh, it didn't. I'm sorry. And I know maybe it's not the best reaction, but I don't know, Chris. You want you can be the savior here. Tell me, tell me why it was good. You you I, I'm the heel. You're the baby face right now. So you tell me why why this is a good thing. I, I like it because you, you've been to games at T-Mobile, ton of games at T-Mobile. You've been to one game in Arizona. So tell me why this was a cool experience. I'm sorry to cut you off, but go. I like it because it was different. It was a lot smaller. And the rest of 
Well, yeah, as in, in I think I think the way they wait the way they did it was great. I um the only thing With I the lighting I, okay. I the only thing I disliked about it is that they're a little besides Sunrise and the boards and all the Coyote fans fans which are literally none. Um, you say there weren't enough thing. Coyote fans. Is what you're saying? You felt there's not enough support. Okay, keep going. Um, that's the only thing I didn't like. But I I thought the rest of the stand was diff was different, and, and I, and I, I like that. I like how how they're trying to do things different. And that's fair, dude. Um, here's my concerns, and I think I would have felt better if I got the impression that the Coyotes were part of that arena. I know it's not their arena at all. It's not their arena. I know, I know, I know. The Coyotes have a Central Division Championship, or was it Pacific? Either way, the Coyotes have a division banner. I didn't see it anywhere. No pride. Um, there was one Coyotes logo on the center ice. And then, obviously, on the boards, of course, there were Coyotes logos. But there was nothing around the arena, like, supporting the team or anything like that. Like, I know this is temporary, but I just felt like the Coyotes being in that arena were, were a nuisance to the arena as well. Like, I just didn't feel that they were welcomed at all. And I can't imagine what the players feel like, especially the vets that are around the team or vets considering coming to Arizona to play for this team next year. So, I don't know. I mean, listen, again, I... Let's separate my thoughts on the team, which I think is great, and their situation is looks good for the future. But that arena, that situation, I hope it improves, starting with, I think, June 27th when the owner is supposed to bid on some plot of land somewhere, and it's supposed to get a lot better. So good luck to the Coyotes on, on their stadium situation, to the fans that stopped by to chirp me. I appreciate you guys. I do. We had positive interactions. You know, we disagreed. I appreciate every second of it. So... There we go. Fun visiting a new barn, or excuse me, Chris, the party barn. That was our, our trip to the party barn, as they call it, at the Mullet Arena. Joke. All right, dude. We got we got a problem right now. We got to talk about something. We got to talk about something. Last night's loss put the Golden Knights in what we could call a pickle right now. This is a game the Golden Knights were not supposed to lose. They were heavy favorites. They... Yeah, it's a game the Golden Knights can never, ever lose when you have a three-goal lead, but they did lose. So let's acknowledge reality and let's look at the – let's pick up the pieces right now. The Golden Knights are five points behind the Edmonton Oilers. Edmonton Oilers have one extra game in hand, meaning that the Go Oilers played one less game so far than the Golden Knights. Tonight, Chris, the Edmonton Oilers play? The Coyotes. What? The battle for? Oh, the battle for Alberta. Chris is excited for the battle for Alberta. He we we've watched a lot of YouTube montages with all the all the craziness that happens in a Flames uh, Oilers game. It's so much fun. Um, so that's tonight. Edmonton is playing off of a back to back. They had a great victory over the Avalanche on Friday night, which gave the Oilers a five point cushion over the Golden Knights. Gold Knights are now 10 points again back from the Vancouver Canucks in the standings. I made a prediction the Golden Knights would be mathematically alive for the division with three games left. Last night's loss to the Coyotes all but basically eliminated that as a possibility. The bigger concern right now, Chris, in all of this, the Los Angeles Kings are one point behind the Golden Knights. So if the Golden Knights wind up dropping into the wild card situation, that almost assures them a matchup with either the Dallas Stars or Vancouver Canucks in the first round of the playoffs, which honestly, I'm I don't mind playing the Canucks in the playoffs. The Dallas Stars, they're 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 a wagon right now. They're looking pretty good. Um, but I I was really hoping the Golden Knights could find a way to claw back into getting home ice advantage for the first round against the Edmonton Oilers. So I guess my question I'll ask you, Chris, between Vancouver, Edmonton, or Dallas, which team would you like the Golden Knights to play first in the playoffs? What are the three teams, Ken? Vancouver, Edmonton, Dallas. Mm, I just... I want to say Vancouver because we have not played them yet. I think it'll be a good experience. I think it'll be a good, good seven game series, series, series. So 
But that's not what's going to happen. I don't want. I don't want any four game series. I don't want a five game series. I don't want a six a six game series. I want a seven game series. I'm jumping in. You said the Golden Knights haven't played the Canucks yet in the playoffs. Not last year. Correct. Not last year. They did play them once in the playoffs though. Before they went seven games with the Canucks in the bubble playoffs, if you recall. Golden Knights had a 3-1 lead in that series, and uh, Thatcher Demko, the current goaltender, went on an absolute heater, and they extended that to a seven-game series in which the Golden Knights won the seventh game of that series. I believe it was a one nothing or maybe 2 nothing because of an empty net goal or something like that. So Vancouver at that time, and they're, they were a shadow themselves. They're, they're a much better team right now than they were a few years ago in that bubble situation. But Funny that you brought that up. I actually, I actually got a library in my Vancouver Canucks book. Um, it, it has that in the book. I'm not sure if that was that the first was that the first page. Listen, give Chris and any 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 nine year old credit for knowing what what a library is these days. So that that's certainly a good thing. I'm giving you credit, Chris. Libraries are much different than they used to be, and much I don't know. Anyway. I'm not against your theory on playing Vancouver first. I don't know if Vancouver is ready to make the step to become a championship contending team. I've said this a lot. Give me the Oilers in the first round. I've said my made my comments about Chris Knobloch and just the coaching and goaltending situation. But for the first time in 76, 75 games, I'm going to agree that I actually don't think I want the Golden Knights and the Oilers tangling in the first round. Hopefully the Golden Knights can upset if they do fall in the wild card you know, situation. Hopefully the Golden Knights can upset one of the top seeds in the Western Conference. And then, you know, setting up a second round matchup potentially with the Edmonton Oilers after they've they've played, you know, hopefully a four, five or six or even seven game series. And they're worn down a little bit, maybe a little injury attrition. So, yeah, I mean, for the first time, I'm slightly concerned about the Golden Knights situation. Maybe this Coyotes game was just a, a blip and... They're going to be great for the last six games, or maybe they're not going to be great. So, I don't know. Are we done, Chris? Anything else you want to talk about? Anything else you want to talk about at all regarding uh, our Arizona trip that's related to hockey? Next Friday, next playing the Wild. Let's go Wild. Are you cheering for the Wild? What are you What are you doing here? Why are you talking about the Wilds? Next Friday. Oh, okay. That's so. Chris has the second and third favorite teams: the New York Rangers and Minnesota Wild. Every now and then, he gets a uh, gets a little a little loopy and starts doing weird things like that on the podcast. So there we go. But All right, everybody, we're putting a bow on this one. Um, interesting twenty four hours for the Golden Knights, to say the least. Where one loss against the Coyotes has possibly made a lot of changes in outlooks and things here in Southern Nevada. So hopefully, it winds up just being a blip and not a. Uh, to quote Paul Heyman, Chris, there you go. Hopefully that's what what do you say? That's not a something, it's a spoiler. What's the quote? I can't remember the Paul Heyman quotes. That's not a hot take. That's a spoiler. That's not a I don't know. It's, it's, it's not WrestleMania. Prediction, it's a sport. Say that again. It's not a prediction, it's a sport. Spoiler. It's not a prediction, it's a spoiler. Sport. You said sport. Spoiler. Okay, either way. We're done. We're off the rails. WrestleMania today and tomorrow. So our, our minds are a little preoccupied with that. All right. Thank you very, very much, especially if there's any Coyote fans that did come on to see what the show was all about. I do appreciate you guys. Little Chris appreciate you guys. Tony will appreciate you guys even a lot more than I will. Just watch watch the, the watch lockdown with myself and Tony Monday through Friday just to understand what that's all about right there. All right. Thank you again one final time. Thanks to the everydayers that check us out Monday through Friday. Thank you to the super everydayers that give us a sixth day of the week. For myself, for little Chris, thank you very much for checking out Locked On VGK, your team every day. Take care.